evening. Welcome to the show. My name is Amma Pratt. It's been a very hot day, so let's call it a hot Thursday evening. And hopefully this show would mirror the temperature, you know, uh, uh, of, of, of the day. Because um, the, the issue we are going to be discussing is one that is dear to my heart. And I know that the guest that I have this evening is even more passionate about this issue than, you know, most of us, than the rest of us. Uh, 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 and all of that. It has come up very, very strongly um, due to recent happenings uh, in the media landscape. And on Tuesday, we started the conversation with two media practitioners, with um, Koja Youngson, with David Tamaklo, you know, him being vice president of Primpact, and of course, um, Kojo being a, a, a practitioner with, with Joy News and all of that. So very interesting conversation we had on Tuesday, where we actually sort of based our conversation on what had happened to Caleb Kuda and also Zoe, you know, both of work with um, City TV, City FM, you know, and the broad theme of that conversation was press freedom. This evening, as I announced on Tuesday, I count myself blessed, you know, I count myself blessed because I have been joined by esteemed company, you know, and no better person to talk to about press freedom than my guest. I will not waste your time, and I will definitely not waste his time. My guest for this evening is Ambassador Haruna Atta. He needs no introduction when it comes to this issue about press freedom. He needs no introduction when it comes to politics in Ghana. He needs no introduction when it comes to the media. If you don't know who he is, I'm sure he just dropped from Mars. So I'm sure you can understand. Of course, he's a celebrated author, too, you know, having put down his thoughts eloquently and expressively on paper over time. So, you know, grab yourself a bottle of water. It's, it's going to be a, a long ride. Hello, sir. Hello, good evening. Thank you. My niece. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I take it. Do you want me to expose you? No, no, I need? Please. Okay, okay, okay. Please. Okay, that's okay. That's all right. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you so much Thank for, you for having me here. agreeing to do this. Thank, Thank you. I, I, like I was saying, I feel so blessed yeah. that you know you agreed to do this. So I'm, I, I'm really grateful to be here on this um, nice, on this nice site. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and it's cool. Yes, it's been a hot day today, but I hope I can help cool it cool rather. It. Right. <laughs> rather than make it even hotter. Yes, great. Yes. Great. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so let, let's talk. And, and I want us to start from a general conversation and we can narrow in on specifics. Okay. Generally, when we say press freedom, generally, as a general topic, what do you want us to think about when we think press freedom? Well, f press freedom is one of the fundamental human rights. In fact, when the UN was being established, the, uh, the human rights... Um, the fundamental human rights in the UN Charter put the freedom of expression as one of the top, top, top uh, freedoms for human beings to be uh, enjoyed. Because without the freedom of expression, the subset of which is uh, freedom of the media, well, you can't have freedom, you can't have uh, uh, democracy. So when I hear that um, the question, well, I think of just the freedom of the engine individual to be self-expressive in almost everything and by the way freedom of expression is not meant for just you and I right. the media people know it's for human beings to have the freedom to express yourself because even designing a house is expression let's not just uh, reduce it to the um, to, to, to being just emotional about things or subjective about things even the idea of painting your house, right. you are expressing something. So it's very, very fundamental. So when I am asked such a question, I want to look at it broadly and bring in all these uh, things we human beings uh, have to uh, do to get on together. Because we are the only uh, creatures in creation that have the facility, the facility of talking, the facility of expressing things, and so on. Even our nearest cousins, the baboons, the apes, the gibbons, and so on, they don't have that uh, facility. Right. So it's a special facility evolution has given us, which we must use as our innate, 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 uh, well, call it gift. So 
it's not something to be trifled with. Right. It's not something to be played, something to be played with at all. The freedom of expression is, for me, probably one of the strongest uh, freedoms. Because if you don't have freedom of expression, you can't even have freedom of worship. But when you go to worship, you are expressing something. Christianity, Islam, our religions are based on the written word. That is part of the uh, freedom of expression. So we can't trivialize it. Right, right, right. It, it, it is fundamental. Yeah. And, I mean, here, we are lucky, even our constitution. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Uh, our constitution is very liberal in that regard. And um, I have always said that, yes, many liberal constitutions all over the world have those provisions. But we have tried. We have tried from independence to uphold that, that aspect of constitutional rule, um, to give our people the uh, freedom to express themselves. But oftentimes, especially in terms of uh, uh, military coups right. and quasi-civilian uh, governments, those freedoms have been trampled upon. And um, also in terms of uh, full democratic rule, some governments have shown themselves to be very intolerant of that kind of freedom. And that's when these uh, abuses on the media then start crippling, uh, crippling in. And we've seen what's been happening uh, these past few years. So it's not a very comfortable situation we right. have right now. Right, right, right. Which, which leads me straight to you know, your good old days, not ours. <laughs> we didn't exist then. <laughs> so that takes me straight to your good old days. And, and, I, and I'm going straight there because on Tuesday when we had the conversation, I had a little, one well, of the disagreements, just the, you know, with Kudro Yangson, when I felt as though perhaps what we are seeing now is a reflection of those of us in the media now. And I was making the example that your time, I felt as though even though it wasn't a democracy, you know, the powers that be sort of were afraid of you one way or the other. And, yeah. and, and it feels as though now in a democracy, one would have thought, but now rather I feel as though nobody's really afraid of the press man or the journalist. Or, am yes, I wrong? You're absolutely right. Um, the the, the uh, status quo now is one of impunity, not just journalists, not just impunity against journalists, but impunity against everything, everybody. The, uh, uh, what do we say, the, the body politic has sort of gone haywire somehow. <laughs> and um, I keep telling people that we have to reboot and get back on the line we were. Because look, for example, I, I just printed this out from the Media Foundation for West Africa. Press freedom violations in Ghana, January 2017 to December 2020. It, 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 it doesn't make good reading at all. It, it, it doesn't. It doesn't. It just shows one violation after the other. In fact, they start the uh, alert from February 27, 2017, and the last alert was on December 29, 2020. Um, it, 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 it's not been good. So let's work with the facts we have. Right. Uh, so you were absolutely right. I don't believe that we should just grab things from the sky or be emotional about it or just transpose our feelings. Let's have the facts. Right. And the facts I have from the Media Foundation alert do not give a pleasant story at all. So right now, the media in Ghana is very much under stress, I would say stress, I wouldn't even say strain, under stress. And I think it is relevant that we all raise that issue and talk. Because when the freedom of expression is taken away from you, then life has been taken away from you. Right. Yeah, there's just so much impunity. And as I'm saying, I'm not making it up. When you get this MFWA alerts, it, it, it doesn't give it's, it's a... For, for, yeah, for itself. But for itself. why? Why do you think that today, in a democratic dispensation, like, you know, we have, you know, after 
people like you have fought your fought, you know, your fight, and you know, it's supposed to be the glorious days now. I mean, you did the unthinkable. You have paved the way. So the rest of us are supposed to just, you know, put on our, our ponytails, you know, wear brown shoes, come and sit down and speak freely. And yet, even now, it doesn't seem... Indeed, we have to name and shame. Uh, I'll put it at the doorstep of the political class. By the political class, I mean the leadership uh, in politics, whether it is uh, the reigning party or the party out of power. The, the, the politicians have become rather a little prickly. Uh, they can't take criticisms, sometimes uh, objective, sometimes even maybe just the outpouring of a, of a frustrated citizen. And it is the right of a citizen to be frustrated because governments are there for the citizens. All the good times the governments are having or people in power are having, it's from the citizen because we pay tax. And by the way, everybody pays tax. Right. Sometimes when you talk about tax paying, the people reduce it to pay, pay as you earn. No. Mm -hmm. Everything you buy, for example, has a tax element on it and many other things. So everybody pays tax. Everybody pays tax. Even the little child, maybe you go to buy ice cream. Right. Maybe there's a little tax on the sugar if you use for the ice cream. So everybody pays tax. So it is within our rights as citizens to question what governments do with our money, with our time with the facilities we give them, and so on and so forth. But then, of late, it, 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 let's put it this way. It's an intolerant government we have in, in power now. Like I keep saying, let's name and shame, because that's the only way we can resolve some of these things. So you see these attacks on uh, media people, sometimes by just party activists. I mean, uh, sometimes by military people, sometimes police people, operatives of... The, no, I, 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 I hope um, the MFWA would make this available uh, for people to read and see uh, stuff for themselves. Right. But, but the situation we have in Ghana now, it's not very, very nice. Because even the closure of radio stations, the uh, sending of... Um, security operatives to do these kinds of things and even what happened recently to the city FM reporters right. all these things do not add up to, uh, to, to a positive image of, of us as a nation so it is there we should name and shame and uh, this thing about uh, equalization does not come in here oh it happened before the former government is the former no it doesn't come in the present government at each time that's the government that is on the watch. Right. Uh -huh. So this is what is happening now, and that's what we have to discuss. If some bad things have happened in the past, it doesn't mean they should be repeated. What it means is that any government that they take so far should improve upon whatever bad things that were in the past, assuming there were bad things in the past, and then we'll move on. Right, right. So, so, so what do we do? And here... I'm asking the question as, you know, I mean, you know the way I'm asking the question. It's you, right? And, and, this is, and I'm asking you, as young, forget the age, young in terms of, you know... Um, the profession, maybe. Thank you, you know. And also new. I mean, you, you know. What should we do? First of all, um, solidarity. I say this not with any flippancy, but with as much seriousness I can master. I talked to uh, your colleagues at CTFM. Mm -hmm. I talked to Bernard, your colleague, when the two young people were taken by the police and went and subjected to all sorts of humiliation. I asked Ben, I said to him, ah, is there any solidarity from your colleagues? Are they going to... Um, withdraw their services in protest even right. for one hour. Um, Bernard looked so sad. Uh, an unexperienced uh, journalist like him, he looked, he sounded rather pained. He said, no, now, well, we are divided. 
some people, some media people say they are government friendly, others are opposition friendly, and so on. So he says to me um, that there's no solidarity. And it broke my heart because if the media doesn't have solidarity, if you don't put all your politics aside, when these such things come up, such infringements, terrible abuses on your human rights come up, and you can't solidarize and lead the way for the rest of us to show our sympathy and our solidarity to, then nobody can help you. Because civil society also needs a certain uh, fire, a certain spark to move. When I was listening to the interview of the young man and young lady and what happened to them at the police or wherever the police people are taking them to, I was, I was flabbergasted. It, it, it was just a complete abuse. And are we saying that, so that's the end of it, it ends there, right. the police people go free, right. the Minister for Information goes free, right. everybody goes free, it's not right. It's not right. There is the need right now as we speak for an investigation. GGA should call for an investigation into it, a public uh, 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 investigation. Let's find out what went on. Who gave the orders for the police or soldiers to go to a media house and violate its independence. It was a violation. And that can only come from you people. And that's why I'm talking of the solidarity. Without solidarity from practitioners, it won't work. In our case, for example, when I went to jail with uh, uh, Kubaku, the whole country rose. The media got up. The whole country rose to our defense. There were a looters. The international community stepped in and called for our release. In fact, for the first time, Rawlings, the late president, Rawlings was even on the back pedal because he had to comment. He had to comment because he said, well, there, there's nothing he could do about it since it's a judicial process that has uh, <laughs> taken that through. So he was even compelled, for people, Rawlings was compelled to comment on it because of the solidarity that was built around us by our colleagues in the media, which was then taken over by the civil society and by the nation in uh, general. So it's important. I feel heartbroken that your uh, colleagues have not shown any solidarity at all with their colleagues at City right. FM. So if you ask me that question, I would say that's the first, first point thing, of yeah, solidarity. Yeah, solidarity amongst the journalists themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that secondly, we should also, uh, that is as citizens, we should also uh, have the courage from solidarity, you go to courage, we should have the courage, the courage to stand up to these things. Well, not everybody has the courage, but then those of us who have, especially those of us who have the uh, talent of the media, like writing. I write every week. I post my writing every week on the uh, social media. Let's talk. Let's comment. Let's, it, I'm not saying we should be belligerent or bellicose or whatever. Just get the points out and point out to the larger community of uh, Ghanaians that this is go going wrong. Let's go against it. But then Ghanaians too would like to sit down. So solidarity Courage, they come in. And then thirdly, professionalism. Mm -hmm. Having said all of these things, the journalists themselves too, we will have to be professional in the way we do things. So that at the end of it all, even if we are attacked, our main defense, our, our armor would be our professionalism. Have we been professional enough? Can we uh, stand up to whatever threats are coming to our way? by having the armor of uh, professionalism. So these are very, very important uh, points I'm uh, raising. Good question, I must say. Thank you. Thank you. But, but my problem with the first one, that's with the solidarity, then comes back to uh, regulatory bodies. You know, let's really leave regulatory bodies for now. Let, let's just talk about the GJ, for instance. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the bodies that we are all supposed to belong to, or the bodies that we sort of um, look up to. And the fact that 
unfortunately, you know, um, for lack of a better word, they fail us mm -hmm. in, 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 in these times. Yeah. So then again, it leaves us wondering, how do we solidarize when there's no central point, an effective central point to sort of galvanize all of our thoughts and our activities and, you know, how do we... Yeah, I, I, I'm sure it, it's uh, of my concern to some of your colleagues. One uh, asked me a question just last week, right. whether you, uh, there's a need for you people to unionize. And I said, you know, that's your, the association is already a union anyway. Uh, but perhaps the person was referring to local unions, local unions that would involve every worker where you are working. And so if there's a need for agitation, that union within the workplace, which would involve all your workers, your uh, cameramen, your sound men, the journalists, and so on, maybe, I don't know. But then there is the need for... Uh, for a machinery that can take issues up and make the necessary useful noises for others to follow. So um, local unions, I don't know, it has to be discussed. Right. It has to be given body, it has to be given a form and a kind of content within which to work, if such a thing is necessary at all. But like I'm saying, I don't know. The association itself is your uh, union, so to speak. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it's just sad that um, the uh, association itself has been caught in a kind of culture of silence. Um, and that's understandable because a lot of the members of the association are state sector operatives. They don't have the kind of courage and independence you people have. So they are still afraid of their jobs. They are still afraid of their bosses when they go back to the, <laughs> to the state-owned uh, uh, media enterprises. So perhaps that holds them back. They to their hands are tied. But the private sector, you are certainly more robust. Right. So could there be the necessity of maybe, who knows, one of these is forming the Association of Independent Ghanaian Editors, of Ghanaian Journalists. Maybe it could be considered. That's an amazing idea. Uh, I love it. Yeah. And we could come to you. <laughs> <laughs> you could be a patron. Yeah, so you could think of some right. of these things. Right. Uh, nothing stops you because uh, it's the freedom of association. So nothing uh, stops you from getting, call it a rival uh, uh, association, which would be more forceful, more purposeful, and less tied down by the nature of where you are employed. Right. Uh, right. So right. that's that. You are not obliged to the um, information minister. Right. No, you are not uh, you are not in that sector. But they are. Right. Uh, so they, they they can't quite stand up to the politicians, but you can. So think of um, a possible rival organization. Our constitution allows it, the freedom of uh, association. Right. Yeah. So Wow. Well, so I don't know. I'm not, I'm not st saying you should undermine the <laughs> We're just I'm thinking that. Eh? We're we just thinking that now. I'm that's getting why, too excited. That's why it's, your program is called The Couch. You put the person on the couch and start psychoanalyzing the person. Before long, you are saying things you shouldn't be saying. By the time I leave here, there will be a parade of GDA people saying, Aruna, we are doing you a looter. Anyway. So we are just <laughs> no, but I'm too excited about yeah. what you're saying. I don't yeah, know why we haven't even thought about it. Yeah, yeah. Because it's an amazing, mm, you know, if, yeah. if it would serve up. Yeah, it will. Forgive me, I feel as though we are weak. Yeah. yeah. And so mm. helpless and yeah. so powerless. Yeah. Because my heart, shame, it's true. It? My heart was broken when Bernard told me there was no solidarity from any source for those two kids who were were brutalized by, 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 by the police. And the police has no right. Look, this is beyond the pale. This is beyond the pale. You see, but if you had an independent organization that focuses on your peculiar problems, your peculiar needs, 
that you could have taken it up. Right. Because then within you, the uh, independent uh, uh, media people, you could take certain dec decisions. You said, no, one of our members has been treated this way. So tomorrow for one hour, all private radio stations, newspapers, whatever, would go on a looter for one hour or two hours or whatever in protest. Then that will start focusing people's minds that, oh, something is going on. But if this thing has happened, and the next day everything is business as usual, well, then it is business as usual, and nothing happens. Right. But there has to be a motion somewhere. We have to move. This country is gradually sinking into the morass of, I don't want trouble. I don't want trouble. I don't want my name to be mentioned. So what happens? Impunity then rules the day. And when I had the uh, interview of the young man and young woman about on city, one thing struck me. An element of ethnocentrism came through. And that alone, for me, should have been taken up by all the media of Ghana to protest. Because the young lady, the young man, rather said, he said one of the policemen asked him where he was from. And uh, before he could answer, he heard one of them say, and now he has been in. It's on, on, on right. tape. And now he has been in. This shouldn't come out from the mouth of a policeman. That policeman should be dismissed immediately. The tape is there. I heard it. If there is uh, 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 an inquiry, that ethnocentric bigotry should have had the man kicked out of office the next day. But here we are. Because there is no solidarity, even you people who should notice such things, take notes about them and act. Nobody is doing it. It's someone like me on retirement. I've noticed it and I've growled so much. I've told my wife and a few friends that this shouldn't happen. Ghana has gone beyond Anna Oya Ibeni. It, 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 we've gone beyond it. Come on. So, the media <laughs> that is supposed to mirror all these warts and pimples itself has uh, a totally uh, unclear mirror. Right. Yeah, that's, right. that's what I heard. Right. You see, right. so when these things are happening and the media too are not thorough, unfortunately, sometimes the media these days are not very thorough. So they miss out on certain clues and certain vital things that they should pick up and uh, blow to the uh, society to, to say, no, it shouldn't happen. What they did to the uh, city FM people, no, it was wrong. But then for one of them to actually articulate that, oh yeah, I beniana. So the young man said he was so frightened. He said, no, he's from the he's central from region. Yeah. Yeah. So, under whose orders did they 